Okay, man, Cleveland just came out of nowhere and traded for Donovan Mitchell. It is five firsts, three unprotected, two pick swaps. We have Lowry Markin and Colin Sexton and Ochai Abaji going to uh, the Jazz on top of uh, you know those picks. I mean, Danny Hinge, he wanted picks, and now Utah is in a position to be bad and just do the whole rebuild thing. And I guess Colin Sexton can be the central piece of that. And of course they've got as many picks as you can imagine now between the Mitchell and Gobert trades. How many picks is it in total? Like 10 or whatever it is off the top of my head right now. And, uh, you know, with Sexton, obviously we'll talk about Cleveland mostly here, but with, with, with Sexton, I mean, I look, he's averaged over 20 points a game. He's efficient. The question's more so his defense, his playmaking and that stuff. They, I imagine you're also going to hear about him potentially in moves, and the rest of Utah's roster is officially, like, open season. Try to trade for any of those guys. Clarkson, Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt, Mike Conley, Rudy Gay, Bogdanovich, the whole thing. For Cleveland, wow. Okay. So, Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen. There's currently a spot at the other wing spot. Is it Karis LeVert at the moment? I would imagine so. And actually, I just saw it that Colin Sexton has been signed and traded, and it's a four-year deal. So there you go. Sexton's on Utah. Okay. All right. Um, Mitchell and Darius Garland. That is a lot of scoring. And clearly what Cleveland is betting on here is that the front court of Evan Mobley and Jared Allen, which has all the potential to be as devastating of a defensive front court as you could ever imagine. I mean, I would imagine that Evan Mobley is going to get what, at least like two, possibly three defensive player of the year's in his career. I mean, those two together were already shutting teams down defensively this previous season. Here's the thing. Markinen was part of that because you had three huge dudes out there along with like Dean Wade and Kevin Love getting some minutes. And they did get smaller with this move. But of course, the offensive punch now has just gone through the roof. And with Garland and Mitchell, I mean, obviously both of those guys can run screens with Mobley and with Allen. Both Mobley and Allen have all the role potential. I think Mobley is going to keep progressing with his jump shot to where he can be like a real pick and pop option. You could probably run actions with Mitchell or Garland and both of those guys are involved, whether it's like horn sets or whether it's, you know, both of them setting a screen. And then the defense is just in this moment of like, oh my God, there's two seven footers who can both catch an alley-oop and both Garland and Mitchell can pull up and kill us on those. Like, what do we do here? You know, meanwhile, like, there's still a lot of potential for, like, Allen and Mobley to be forces in the post as well. I mean, Mobley might have to gain a couple more pounds there and all that, but, like, he's already shown, like, some hook shots and some turnaround jumpers at times, and I, I really see what Cleveland's getting at. They're like, look, we get it. Defensively, our backcourt, not on the, the list of the best defensive backcourts in the league, but our front court is so good on that side of the floor, it's not going to be a problem at all. And then, offensively, these guys can all play off each other. Now, there is one thing. It is that other wing spot, which Karis LeVert, Isaac Okoro, those are your two candidates. LeVert's better than Okoro right now, at least on offense. Okoro's the better defender, but his offense can just be really rough. Given this move, I mean, this is an all-in move. They gave up the five picks. That's the most you can do in a deal. I think they're going to need more of a two-way guy at that spot now because the one saving grace for trying to guard these guys now would be if one dude can't shoot on the wing. And right now, if Okoro's in the game, teams are going to ignore him like crazy to deal with everything else that's going on here. I mean, you think about just the pull-up three potential. Like, Garland made a lot of progress on that this previous season. And same thing with Mitchell. So it's like, Jared Allen sets a screen for Mitchell or Garland. If the big's not going to be high up on it, both of those guys are going to shoot the pull-up three. So that's going to freak you out right there. But then you're going to have Allen on the dive or Mobley on the dive. You know, you could put him in there. I guess there there might be a conversation of how much can Garland and Mitchell truly play off of each other. But... So what? I mean, you could figure that sort of thing out. Let's think about Cleveland in the context of the East. I mean, we got to remember, before injuries, they were creeping up there in the standings last year, man. And now, I think, like, they just make themselves serious players in the East. They, did they just insert themselves clearly into the top? I mean, I think we were all pretty much like, yeah, Philly, the Bucks, the Celtics, and the uh, Heat in whatever order. The Nets kind of in their own, like, well, if the chemistry stuff works, then the talent is definitely there. I feel like the Bucks are still the best team there with the Celtics number two. But, I mean, you want to talk about the type of front court that you would like to have guarding Giannis? It's pretty much Evan Mobley and Jared Allen, you know? With that said, like, do I think Cleveland are title contenders right now? No. But given where Mobley could end up, could they be it in, like, two years? Because we also imagine Garland's going to keep getting better. I think it's now on the table 
Now, maybe I'm just too high on Evan Mobley, but, you know, you fast forward a few years and some crazy things can happen. This is wild, dude. 